Hi, hello chess lovers and welcome back to Chess Amatoran. In this video, I'll discuss a very interesting chess match played between Daniil Dubov and Asaladze Shota. This game took place on August 2020. Alright, let's dive straight into the game. The game started with d4, knight to f6, then c4, and pawn to g6, followed by knight f3, and obviously bishop to g7. Okay, Dubov continued with knight c3, and Shota's response was pawn c5, guys. Actually, this gambit is quite ordinary. If the pawn is taken, there might be a response like knight a6 or queen to a5. But of course, Dubov chose to control the center with a pawn to d5. All right, after Shota secured the king with short castling. As we know, Dubov is a very aggressive player. So this was his chance to advance the pawn to e5. However, an immediate offer from pawn e6. Unfortunately, it was declined because the pawn kept advancing to e5. Okay, there are three threats for the knight. Knight e8 would certainly be passive, and it also gave white the chance to play pawn h4, h5. Knight h5 doesn't make sense because with pawn g4, the knight gets trapped. So, the knight could only go to g4. This is indeed the best move because the knight also simultaneously exerts pressure on the central pawn e5 twice. And how does Dubov respond to this position? Knight to g5, folks. A very interesting idea from Dubov, considering the knight, which is the only guardian of the pawn, moves to g5. But of course, this isn't just any idea. Look, the queen is attacking the knight, where if the knight takes the pawn right now, pawn f4 is already prepared and the knight would be trapped. So naturally, Shota moves the knight to h6. Then, the knight uniquely protects itself by returning to e4. Because if the bishop takes the pawn, the bishop will be taken back by the knight. So the knight moves to f5 first, preparing to occupy the dangerous outpost in d4. And Dubov's response to this is bishop to g5, attacking the queen. After the queen moves to a5, pinning the knight with the second attack, the bishop capturing the pawn. So, white also needs to be cautious. And it's quite rational for Dubov to move his knight to f6, check. Because this knight also blocks the bishop's attack on the pawn. Shota chooses king to h8. However, Dubov plays pawn g4 first. Simply put, this knight is to be removed from interfering with aiding the king's defense. So, after knight to d4, there's no reason for Dubov not to play the final attack move, pawn h4. Shota, feeling pressured, attempts to fix it with pawn h6 to drive away the bishop. Unfortunately, Dubov confidently advances the pawn to h5, sacrificing the bishop. Is this bishop sacrifice not a blunder? Let's analyze it. If black dares to take the bishop, then clearly pawn takes pawn check. The king can't move, so the bishop has to cover. Take again with rook check. Forces the king to g7. Rook h7 check. Forces the king to take the pawn. Then bishop to d3 check. Still, continuously forcing the knight to cover. Take with pawn check. And after the pawn takes, the queen can come out to h5 for a direct checkmate. Once again, we see a brutal checkmate from Daniel Dubov. And okay, let's get back to the game. So, in conclusion, this bishop's sacrifice shouldn't be accepted. Shota summarizes the pieces by taking the knight. After the bishop takes back, check. And the king to h7. You should pay attention. Maybe if I were playing as white, clearly, I'd take the pawn because the rook is ready to attack pawn h6. That can also be complemented by the queen's attack to c1. But the grandmaster doesn't do that. Dubov with king to d3, folks. Apart from capturing the pawn, the bishop will also be available to assist the attack. And because black can't do much yet, Shoda takes the pawn on d5, opening a way for the bishop to not be too passive. But Dubov doesn't want to take the pawn yet. He chooses to advance the pawn to g5. And finally, the bishop's path is truly opened after the pawn moves to d6. But it seems to be too late because Dubov now takes the pawn, check. After the pawn captures back 
Rook takes pawn, check. Forces the king to g8. Clearly, the follow-up is rook h8, check. Forcing the king to f7. And again, white is presented with a very favorable position. Simply rook h7, check, right? But once again, Grandmaster Duboff has his own choices. The bishop is sacrificed for the pawn, check. Yes, this is the difference. The king has two options. Where king e6, there's queen g4, check. The knight covers, queen captures back, checkmate. So indirectly, this is a forced sacrifice. Shota has to take the bishop, no choice. Finally, the queen assists by going to h5, forcing the king to f5. The pawn advances to g6, check. There are still two options for the king, but it's the same if king f4, queen g5, check. The king has to go to f3, then queen g3, checkmate. So, with the king forced to e6. And finally, Dubov takes the pawn, check. At this point, Chota resigns immediately. A truly aggressive attack from Dubov. If you look at black's pieces, the rook, knight, and bishop, they still haven't moved at all, because in the opening and middle game, black spent more turns moving this knight at d4. Then, it continued with the king moving around until the game ended. Shota wasn't too bad, but indeed, Dubov dominated the game until the end. And let's see if the game continues. Ultimately, the king is forced to d7, guys. Then, just queen to h7, check, and the game is finished. King e8, queen e7, checkmate. Or the last choice is the rook covering. It's the same because if the queen takes the rook, it's also checkmate. Or, if you want to have some fun, pawn advances to e6, check. Knight takes pawn, queen takes rook, checkmate. Or, the king runs to c7. We'll see a beautiful checkmate again with bishop to d8, yes, checkmate. If you follow Daniel Dubov's games, he always has unique and deadly move options. And well, that's it for this video. Hopefully, the video and the game itself were entertaining and useful. If there were any mistakes, I apologize. Greetings, chess lovers. Thank you.